When they walked back, Nikolai went straight into the back seat, and the driver naturally became Max. Max, who was full of food and drinks, was naturally in a good mood. He did not care about these details or that he had wine some time back. Opening the door, Max sat in the driver's seat and the car started. On the other hand, Emily, who was in the villa, had already woken up. She came out of the room and looked at the empty villa. There was no trace of anyone. Emily pulled the corner of her mouth Max had left the villa even though he had told her that they should lie low. Since there was no one in the house, Emily went straight to the living room. There was really nothing in this villa. She was very hungry and walked straight to the kitchen. She opened the refrigerator in the kitchen and found that it was empty. In an instant, Emily remembered her time in the cabin. Fortunately, this time she had a television, so she would not get bored. Starting to feel hungry, Emily touched her stomach. Why wasn't there food in the fridge? At least in the cabin, she had instant noodles. Emily turned on her phone. There were no takeout apps on her phone. She opened the app store and planned to download one. Currently, takeout was the most suitable option for her, but she did not want to eat takeout food. After eating only instant noodles for so long, Emily wanted to eat something good. Looking at the app on her phone, Emily hesitated about whether she should download it or not. At that moment, she heard something outside. Emily looked out of the window and saw Max and Nikolai walking together. Emily was lying on the sofa, looking very hungry. Max looked at Emily's dispirited look and revealed a malicious smile. Emily, are you awake? Emily looked at Max with a poker face. No. I'm just sleep talking to you now, she said sarcastically. Are you hungry? Max asked, ignoring her sarcastic comment. Emily shook her head. She could not be bothered to talk to him. She looked at him without any energy. Seeing Emily was in low spirits, Max wondered if he should say something to make her happy. Nikolai saw what was going on and walked up to them. He was holding a bag of food in his hand. Nikolai placed the lunchbox on the coffee table and said to Emily, Eat it while it's hot. Emily's eyes drifted to the packed lunchbox. She looked at Max. Did you guys go out to eat? Max smiled. Yes, and we brought you some food with us. Emily did not feel very happy when she heard Max's words. She just pulled at the corner of her mouth. You told me not to go out, yet you guys went out to eat at a restaurant today? Emily's tone carried some ridicule. Max looked at Emily with a helpless expression. One can't go on without food and drink. Emily rolled her eyes at Max. This was not a good excuse. But now was not the time to discuss this matter. Emily wanted to quickly fill her stomach. Ignoring Max, Emily opened the box and took a deep breath. It smelled so appetizing. Mmm, it smells good. Emily smiled. She would naturally feel better after eating. Max brought Emily some utensils from the kitchen and looked at her with doting eyes. He liked Emily's current appearance. She looked like a carefree girl. Emily took the knife and fork and began to enjoy her late breakfast. Nikolai had gone upstairs a long time ago, but he still saw the situation downstairs clearly. Max's patience with Emily was beyond imagination. Nikolai's expression changed slightly. He did not know whether he should encourage Max or feel sorry for him. It was a blessing to have someone he liked. However, he knew that it must be hard for him not to have his feelings reciprocated. Nikolai had experienced this kind of pain before. He didn't know what Max was feeling right now. Putting aside those messy thoughts, Nikolai planned to go back to his room and have a good sleep. Getting a good amount of sleep was very important to him. Now, Nikolai would wake up every night because he was worried that something would happen to Max. Nikolai could clearly sense the approaching danger. It was like a bomb that could explode at any time. However, Max didn't seem to care at all. Nikolai looked at the bright smile on Max's face from afar and turned his head. He did not want to continue watching. 
Max was stubborn, and Nikolai could not influence his thoughts. Emily was really hungry. She quickly finished all the food they had brought for her. Standing by the side, Max felt a sense of accomplishment. He liked Emily's lively look. Emily could not find a trash can to throw away the packaging. Max looked at the empty villa and had to admit that there was no way to live comfortably in this kind of place. Max, we can't let other people come to our house to clean after us. And we can't just go out. May I ask how we should survive in this place? Emily felt that this was a problem of survival. Max touched his chin. I have already considered this question. The best way is to ask someone I trust to come and help. Emily felt that it was as if Max did not say anything. The definition of trust was really complicated. There are too few people who can be trusted. Emily could not think of a completely trustworthy person who could come and help them. Max hadn't been in LA for long. How could he know someone? Don't worry. I already have a candidate. He will definitely help, Max said confidently. Emily heard him and asked curiously, Is your friend from LA? Emily remembered that Max did not have any friends in LA. Don't worry about it. He's already on his way, Max said mysteriously. The way he looked at Emily became abnormal. Emily looked at Max warily. It seemed that things were really complicated. At this time, Max's phone rang. Emily and Max's eyes were attracted to it at the same time. Max picked up the phone under Emily's gaze. Come quickly. Miss Foster is angry. Max hung up the voice right after he finished speaking. He did not give Emily a chance to hear the other party's voice at all. Although Max only said a simple sentence, Emily was able to deduce some information from it. It seems like I know this person as well. Using the elimination method, Emily could almost guess who it was. I think you already guessed it. Max smiled unseriously. We agreed to keep it a secret, but you leaked our whereabouts. Emily complained. I made a deal with that person. Max shrugged. Emily was shocked when she heard him. When you guys did this, did you think about my feelings? Emily did not like this feeling of being kept in the dark. She rubbed her temples. She was really distressed. I'm sorry. He really gave me an offer that I couldn't refuse, Max said honestly. <laughs> Whatever. Emily did not get angry. After all, the person coming was someone she trusted. Max did not act recklessly. Max knew that Emily would react that way and instantly felt much more relaxed. He did not want to see Emily really get angry. Then what do you plan to do next? Max asked in a testing tone. When he comes... I have something to tell him. Emily was a little anxious. She might as well take this opportunity to tell him everything. Then it seems that I need to give the two of you some space. Max teased. Don't be sarcastic. He's coming here because you were the one who betrayed me. Emily was still a little angry. Thinking about what Max had done, she felt unhappy. I didn't betray you. I'm helping you. Max smiled. I don't want to listen to you. Emily's words made Max's smile stiffen on his face. Max knew that Emily didn't really mean it, so he did not take it personally. The two of them looked at each other for a moment. Max said to Emily, Then I will go upstairs first. You should treat him well when he comes. Emily slightly narrowed her eyes and looked like she was not someone to be trifled with. Max quickly turned around. With his back facing Emily... Max waved his hand. Emily, I believe that when he comes, he'll give us a brand new villa. Emily heard Max's words and felt even more unhappy. She did not want to stay in the living room to receive him. I want to go upstairs. You can answer the door when he comes. After all, you're the one who invited him over, Emily said to Max's back. I'm really tired. I really don't have the energy, Max said sincerely. However, the truth was that Max seemed to be in high spirits. It was impossible to admit that he did not have any energy at all. It seemed like Max was completely on that person's side this time. Emily felt like she had been betrayed. 
she looked at Max's back angrily. Although she pretended to be calm, Emily was not prepared to face that person later. Could it be that she would completely ignore him? Or would she go to her bedroom on the second floor and never come out again? But running away was not Emily's style, and Max knew that. Emily's feet seemed to be filled with lead. She could not move at all, but her heart was more inclined to face her problems head on. Who is the person coming to see Emily? When did Max contact him in private? Emily thought to herself. Max seemed to be hiding a lot from her. In any case, that person would appear at any time. Emily threw herself onto the sofa again. Her face was sickly. Since that person could reach a deal with Max, he must have paid a high price. Thinking like this, Emily felt that it was not a big deal to see him once. At this time, the slightest movement outside was making Emily nervous. She pricked up her ears and listened to the commotion outside. There was a trace of anticipation in her heart. During this period of time, she would always think of that person. Since she had truly loved that person before, how could she easily erase him from her heart? The white walls around her were like a cage. Emily hugged her legs on the sofa. Her eyes were filled with fatigue and confusion. The knocking on the door broke Emily's self-pity. It seemed like that person had come. She waited for him to push the door open and enter. Is anyone there? Casimir stood outside the villa. He was also nervous as he pounded at the door. When he did that, the door creaked open. It turned out that the door was not closed. It seemed that Max had really helped a lot. Casimir walked straight in and headed toward the living room. There, he saw Emily sitting on the sofa. Although she was wearing slippers and her hair was disheveled, Casimir felt that she was extremely beautiful. Hi. Casimir greeted Emily. Emily kept looking away, avoiding Casimir's gaze. She did not want to respond to him. Casimir walked closer. Emily's heart was also disturbed by the sound of his footsteps approaching her. Casimir looked down at Emily. He looked at her for a long time, but she did not look back. Casimir bent down. He moved his upper body forward and got closer to her. Emily, you really don't want to talk to me? His voice was incredibly gentle. What did you come here for? Emily asked. Casimir took another step forward. Emily finally looked at him. The two of them looked into each other's eyes. Emily looked at Casimir and wanted to say something, but stopped. Casimir, who was full of love, could not say anything for a moment. I missed you, so I came, Casimir replied. He didn't want to take his eyes off her. Emily was on guard. She did not want to continue talking with Casimir. She did not want to have any contact with him. She unconsciously pushed herself back. I made myself very clear last time, Emily said. She still could not get over the hurdle in her heart. Seeing Emily turn her face away, Casimir sat directly next to her. You always pretend to hate me, but I know your heart. Casimir did not want to miss Emily again. He wanted to let her understand his feelings. Casimir, please leave me alone. Emily stood up and turned her head. She could not do it. Casimir reached out and grabbed Emily's arm. The two of them were in a deadlock. Emily wanted to break free, but she could not muster any strength. Emily, you've had a lot of time to think these past few days. This time, Casimir wanted to take the initiative. He could not be passive and let Emily lead him by the nose. I don't know what you mean by that. Emily sneered and tried to shake Casimir off. Unfortunately, his hands were tightly clenched 
and she could not shake him off. Emily, running away won't do us any good. Casimir's voice also turned cold. Emily did not expect Casimir to be so sure of himself this time. At this point, she regretted staying in the living room and waiting for Casimir to come. Casimir, we are from two different camps. We can't go on seeing each other, Emily said flatly. Two camps? It seems that this is just your one-sided understanding, Casimir told Emily. Isn't that so? Emily looked at Casimir's calm expression. I have always been by your side. How can I be in a different camp? Casimir sometimes did not understand why Emily did not ask any questions, but beat around the bush. You and I are both business people. You should know how to weigh the pros and cons. Emily looked at Casimir coldly. She wanted to hide the emotions in her eyes. Businessmen still have the right to talk about love. Businessmen can still give up their interests for love. Casimir looked straight into Emily's eyes. He could sense her hesitation. I can't do it. And I don't want to force you to do it. Emily felt that this was unfair to Casimir. Not to mention, she did not fully trust him. Emily, are you really stupid? I love you, and I'm willing to stand by your side no matter what happens. Casimir clearly told Emily what was in his heart. He wanted to make it clear where he stood. When push comes to shove, are you sure you can do things that sacrifice your self-interest for your love? Emily did not believe in love. She did not believe that a smart and cunning businessman like Casimir could make such a concession. I am sure, Casimir said confidently. Emily was moved by Casimir's sincere eyes. She almost believed him, but a part of her told her to be skeptical. I don't know about that. I believe in human nature more than in love. Emily gave her answer. If she did not believe it, she did not believe it. No one could change it. Casimir smiled. It was such a stiff atmosphere, and yet he smiled so brightly. Sorry, I know it is my fault. I didn't make things clear from the beginning. It's normal for you to be so suspicious. Casimir put all the blame on himself. Emily looked at Casimir suspiciously. The Casimir in front of her seemed to be a different person. She didn't even understand how he could see through her thoughts so easily. She had to admit that his words had touched her. She wanted to give in to him, but reason pulled her in the opposite direction. Casimir, why don't you give up on our complicated relationship? Emily could not help but ask. We have not started yet. How can we give up? Casimir saw through Emily's conflicted heart and knew that she was in distress. Casimir, I don't understand you, Emily said helplessly. Casimir's fiery eyes made her afraid. Don't leave me. Sooner or later, you will see what kind of person I am inside and out. Casimir let go of Emily. He was confident that she was already wavering. I'm afraid we don't have the time. Emily felt that time was getting tighter. There were many things that needed to be done. She didn't have time to dwell on love. I have a lifetime of time. How can I not have time for you? Casimir argued. His strong attitude made Emily unable to give a better retort. Why are you so stubborn? No one can guarantee that your current feelings will last forever. Emily pointed out. I will always love you. That will never change, Casimir said. He had never been more certain about anything. Emily could not be subdued with just a few nice words. She looked at Casimir coldly. She did not want him to know how she was feeling at the moment. Casimir, do you know about the current situation in L.A.? Emily asked with a business-like attitude. Casimir could tell Emily was giving in. I know. 
I know everything. I know LA is in chaos. I know that Scarlet was kidnapped. Emily was surprised. She did not expect Casimir to know so much. It turned out that he was just pretending not to know anything. Indeed, he knew more than Emily imagined. Since you know everything, you should know that the Foster family is in the center of this storm. I can't guarantee that I'll be able to escape unscathed, Emily said. I know. I know how bad your situation is. I know how bad your mood is right now. But I am willing to face it together with you. Casimir said confidently. He would definitely protect Emily. It's not worth it. You can't throw away everything you have for me, Emily said in distress. The more Casimir behaved like this, the more she felt that she was despicable. How could she be treated like this by Casimir? Whether it's worth it or not is up to me. Casimir stood up straight. With his height advantage, he looked down on Emily. There was still tenderness and deep affection in his eyes. Emily raised her head and looked at Casimir. She had gone crazy. After listening to what he had just said, Emily felt that she didn't have any excuse left. Still, she couldn't make any promises to him. Casimir knew that he was only one step away from victory, but it was difficult for him to take this step. He was waiting for Emily's response. He firmly believed that his words had touched Emily's heart. After all, he knew how soft Emily's heart really was. Will Emily allow herself to be convinced by Casimir? After escaping from Casimir's grip, Emily crossed her arms around her chest and a mocking smile appeared on her face. Her eyes were filled with neither sadness nor joy as she looked into Casimir's eyes. Casimir did not try to avoid her, he looked straight back at Emily. The two of them were confronting each other. It made Max, who was upstairs, feel anxious for them. Are you still not willing to give in? Casimir smiled helplessly. Emily was more stubborn than he had imagined. He could not even think of a better way. Emily stepped back. There were some things that could not be compromised. Emily did not know how to respond to Casimir. She just looked at him in silence. She hoped that he would give her more time to process things. It's not that simple, Emily said coldly. The two of them had very different views and naturally had conflicts. Casimir could not agree with Emily's words, and he could not convince her. Though he was hoping for a quick victory, he was a patient man. There was no need to hurry. Since he could not resolve the issue right away, he would take it slow. Maybe I don't understand women. I really don't know what to do to make you happy, Casimir said in distress. Since I make you feel that way, why don't you just give up on me? Emily really did not understand what Casimir was holding on to. The little bit of gentleness she gave Casimir was not enough for him to hold on until now. In the end, things returned to how they had always been. There was an irreconcilable conflict between them. There was a conflict between the two families. In a way, they were like Romeo and Juliet, in the sense that they would never be able to live together happily ever after. The air was filled with a disturbing feeling. Casimir did not even know how to control his emotions. Emily, in turn, hugged herself. She was starting to feel cold. I'll go upstairs, Emily pointed upstairs. The living room was too empty, and she felt a cold wind blowing at her. Casimir nodded. Leave the rest to me. Of course, Casimir would not forget his mission. Seeing that Casimir did not insist on staying, Emily let out a sigh of relief. This was for the best. Emily came to the stairs and was about to go upstairs when she turned to look at Casimir. Their eyes met in the air. 
Though their eyes spoke volumes, neither uttered a single word. Casimir's gentle eyes made her heart skip a beat. However, she hardened her heart and retracted her gaze. It was better to go upstairs as soon as possible. Casimir was the only one left in the living room. Thinking back to how he found Max a few days ago, he was glad that he was able to strike a deal with him. Who knew that Max was amenable? This was even more exciting than winning the lottery. Casimir recalled Max's appearance. That seemingly unreliable man was actually a good guy. Knowing that Max had done a lot for Emily, Casimir felt a little ashamed when he compared himself to him. Whether Max was a love rival or a friend, Casimir still had a lot of respect for him. It was time to work. The villa was indeed not suitable for people to live in. He had to make it warmer. He knew that Emily actually yearned for a warm, cozy place. Casimir resisted the urge to go upstairs. Going to Emily's bedroom wouldn't make things any better. Thinking about Emily's ambiguous attitude, he realized that she was worried about everything going on. Love and conspiracy accompanied each other. Casimir could not tell whether it was funny or pitiful. It was his fault that he had fallen in love. The people Casimir called over were all people he trusted. He promised Max that he would never reveal Emily's temporary residence. Although Casimir knew that he could not hide Emily's whereabouts in LA, he was still willing to do his best not to leak that information. What he traded with Max was information about the dark forces in LA. This was information that Casimir had spent a lot of effort to acquire. He was willing to share it with Max. Since he loved Emily, Casimir was no longer confused. He knew that Max was Emily's guardian. He only wanted Max to be able to protect Emily better. Originally, the position of the guardian belonged to Casimir. Unfortunately, he still had other responsibilities. He could not forget his mother's hatred. Even though his mother told him not to avenge her before she passed away, Casimir could not let those who caused her death get away with it. Casimir sat on the sofa where Emily was sitting. Emily's fragrance was still there. Casimir was satisfied. Things could have gone worse. Casimir was determined not to give up on Emily, especially now that victory was in sight. He was confident that one day he would be able to overcome all the hurdles in Emily's heart. Casimir got up from the sofa and walked straight to the door of the villa. He immediately opened the door. He let the sunlight in and breathed in the fresh and natural air outside. Emily heard the noise from upstairs. She came out of the bedroom and looked at Casimir downstairs. It seemed that after Emily left, Casimir's mood suddenly became clear. This made her think about herself even more. In front of Emily, Casimir could never be his real self. With her, he always thought about her needs and feelings first. The more outstanding Casimir was, the more Emily felt that she could never give Casimir his freedom. Emily loved freedom, but she liked to bind others. When two people were together, one would give up on himself. Since Emily was unwilling to compromise, it was up to Casimir to always accommodate her. This was unfair. It was an investment without any returns. Emily could not watch Casimir do this for her. Similarly, even if Emily did not have any experience in love, she understood one thing deeply. In fact, the initiative of love was always controlled by the side that contributed more. The balance of love was completely on Casimir's side. Casimir kept placing chips on the scale. These emotional weights were weights that Emily could not afford. If there was a disagreement between the two of them in the future, when their love had all but faded, how would they deal with things? She liked to control everything, and love was unpredictable. She had completely lost her autonomy. 
this feeling terrified her. As if sensing Emily's gaze, Casimir, who was sitting on the sofa in the living room, raised his head and looked in the direction of Emily on the second floor. Caught off guard, she met Casimir's gaze. Emily turned around and left. She did not want to see Casimir's glaring smile. She could not respond to it. If only she could love Casimir like a moth flying into a fire, that would be great. At this moment, she hated her own damn rationality. It was either that she did not have enough rationality or not enough love. The answer was so obvious. Emily could not even lie to herself. She really could not be perfunctory with Casimir. Once she understood this relationship clearly, Emily could not accept Casimir. She did not know if things would change when all the obstacles between them were removed. Emily did not dare to gamble with her feelings. That wouldn't be fair to her or to Casimir. Reason warned Emily again to not get close to Casimir and not to accept him. She had to wait at least until the dust settled so she could see things clearly. The living room was wide open. The wind outside blew in. Casimir's heart was full of warmth, and he did not feel cold at all. The distance between him and Emily was only a hundred steps. Casimir had forgotten about the troubles at Versacorp and was willing to run errands for Emily. Casimir was always willing to go the extra mile for the people he loved. Even though there were many people trying to reach him, he wanted to stay by Emily's side today. Just now, Emily walked out of the bedroom to look at him. This meant that she was also deeply affected. In the business world, one could not give up no matter the odds. Sometimes, love was the same. The last time they got into an argument, he almost gave up. He would not make such a mistake again. He would persevere until he got what he wanted. Looking at the time, he figured that the people he had arranged to come would arrive soon. Casimir wanted to prove to Emily that his love for her was complete. Their love story had only just begun. Casimir revealed a victorious smile. Breathing in the air, he could even feel Emily's heartbeat. However, at this moment, Casimir did not expect Versacorp to be in such a mess. The sudden appearance of a mysterious figure caused things to go haywire at Versacorp. Due to Casimir's absence, the company's upper management was in a state of panic. Unfortunately, they couldn't find any trace of Casimir anywhere. Who is the mysterious person who had arrived at Versacorp? Carefully looked at the old man. Their eyes were filled with respect. Where is Casimir? The old man asked in a gentle tone. The managers were afraid that the old man would ask this question. The old man's expression was a little subtle when he saw the reaction on the faces of the managers. They did not need to answer for him to know that Casimir was not present in the company at all. The old man wasn't angry. He looked at them coldly with a mysterious smile on his face. The managers sensed the old man's displeasure and looked at him with fear and trepidation. They wanted to make him feel more comfortable. However, the old man maintained his neutral expression. Outside, the employees kept calling Casimir's phone. Unfortunately, no one answered. Casimir was focused on Emily, so his phone was on airplane mode. When Casimir finally turned his phone as he was leaving the villa and saw all the missed calls, he felt anxious. Checking the messages, Casimir realized that there was trouble at Versacorp, and he quickened his pace. He had to hurry back to the company. He didn't expect his grandfather, Joseph, to come to L.A. Joseph had health issues. Casimir didn't know why he had come to L.A. to see him. However, Casimir didn't have the time to worry about Joseph's health. He was in a difficult situation now. Casimir rushed back to Versacorp and headed straight to his office. Just before he pushed the door open, he hesitated. 
he knew that his grandfather must be inside. Casimir did not know what he was going to say when he pushed the door open. When he thought of his grandfather's stern face, Casimir felt uneasy. Now things had become complicated. The corner of Casimir's mouth twitched, and his expression became serious. He would have to face what he had to face sooner or later. Casimir knew that there was no point in running away. Putting away his worries and hesitation, he pushed the door open and walked in. As expected, he saw Joseph waiting for him. Casimir's calm eyes did not have any warmth. The old man's eyes did not have any sadness or joy. Their eyes met in the air. Neither of them wanted to look away. In the end, Casimir compromised. He lowered his head and walked towards Joseph step by step. He knew that Joseph was going to punish him. Casimir tried to think of a way to defend himself. Joseph's eyes showed his disappointment towards Casimir. This left Casimir speechless. He had completely lost the initiative. He was waiting for Joseph to pass his judgment. Joseph didn't say anything, and Casimir didn't know what to say. The two of them were in a deadlock. Casimir knew what Joseph meant, but he couldn't admit his mistake. Joseph didn't expect that Casimir wouldn't admit his mistake when he saw him. He didn't know where he had gotten his courage from. Neither of them showed their weakness as they looked at each other. Joseph was waiting for Casimir to compromise. After all, Versicorp hadn't been fully handed over to Casimir yet. Grandpa, why did you come to see me? Casimir asked with an innocent face. Joseph was even more disappointed with Casimir. He didn't expect him to behave like this. Joseph felt even worse when Casimir greeted him politely. I am here because you owe me an explanation. Joseph flew into a rage. Since Casimir wasn't admitting his mistake, he didn't need to be polite to him. Casimir looked at Joseph indifferently. Since it had come to this, Casimir didn't have anything to say to him. Although Casimir knew that Joseph was in charge, so what? What's the matter? Casimir said casually. He remembered Joseph's teachings. He wouldn't be polite when it was time to strike. Joseph had come this time to investigate Casimir's ulterior motives. There was a time bomb in Versacorp. Casimir knew that this would happen sooner or later. He had already thought of a countermeasure in his heart, and Casimir was not in a hurry to deal with it this time. He talked as if he had rehearsed this conversation a thousand times in his head. Casimir, has the Graves family ever mistreated you? Joseph asked angrily. Casimir smiled and said, Why? Have I ever mistreated the Graves family? He liked the way Joseph looked angry. Anger made people slip up. Joseph looked at Casimir. He could not see any remorse in his eyes. He knew that Casimir had betrayed Versacorp. Now he could only take solace in the fact that he had not caused irreparable losses to the company. Casimir, from today onwards, you will no longer be the CEO of Versacorp, Joseph said coldly. He had already made up his mind about that. Casimir didn't seem to care at all. He felt that Joseph was just bluffing. He replied casually, Firing a company's CEO is not something you can do verbally. There are a lot of procedures to go through. Looking at the smirk on Casimir's face, Joseph felt powerless, and he glared at him. However, Casimir remained unmoved. His smiling face was ice cold. Casimir's smile made Joseph panic even more. He wondered if Casimir had an ace up his sleeve. Casimir, it was I who gave you all this. Joseph decided to play the emotional card. Casimir sat down opposite his grandfather. It was you who ruined everything. Casimir, don't you care about the good old times? Joseph asked helplessly. It seemed like Casimir had made up his mind. Grandpa, 
What good old times? You have never trusted me. I was always just a chess piece in your hands. Casimir's heart turned cold when he heard his grandfather's words. It was too late for Joseph to use soft tactics. Casimir, why don't you understand me? I was just angry, Joseph said in his defense. Don't put up that pitiful face again. You and I both know what kind of person you are. Casimir had seen through Joseph long ago. He pretended to be very close to Casimir just to better control him. Casimir, I have trained you for so long. I made you the CEO of Versacorp. What are you unhappy about? Joseph asked in pain. Is this what I want? Casimir pointed at himself and asked. Have you asked me for my opinion? What do you think I am in your eyes? Do I have to bear all of this because I was born into this family? You should know that I am an illegitimate child, a disgrace to all of you. You gave me this to make up for the fact that you basically let my mother die. But it's not enough. Casimir clenched his fists as he spoke. He had wanted to say these words to Joseph a long time ago. Joseph looked at Casimir in surprise. He didn't expect him to feel that way. It turned out that not everyone cared about money and power above all else. You never said that. Joseph didn't know what to say. He felt that Casimir was a stranger to him. What do you want me to say? I am nothing in your eyes. Casimir looked at Joseph with a cold smile. He knew that the culprit was this old man. He was the one who had made him submit to him for so many years. Joseph shook his head. He had never thought that the situation would turn out like this. What Casimir said was not wrong at all. I'm sorry. If you want to hate me, then so be it. Take it out on me. Don't drag Versacorp into this. Joseph didn't want to argue with Casimir anymore. He, who had never lowered his head, admitted his mistake on his own accord. However, Casimir refused. This wasn't the only thing he wanted. I'm sorry, Grandpa, he said. I don't care about your apology. I want more. I want you to see Versacorp go bankrupt with your own eyes. I want you to pay for your crimes for the rest of your life. This way, you can spend the rest of your life regretting what you did to my mother. Casimir said with a judging tone. Joseph looked at Casimir in horror. It turned out that Casimir had been plotting this for a long time. He had underestimated him. Although he was still one step away from his goal, Casimir could already foresee the destruction of Versacorp. He was happy with the way things were going. Joseph knew that there was nothing he could do at this point. He lowered his proud head. All these years, he had trusted Casimir too much. In the end, Casimir left him with nothing. Perhaps he shouldn't have agreed to let Casimir move Versacorp to LA. He shouldn't have trusted him completely. Will Joseph be able to save Versacorp from Casimir? With everything that he had wanted to be openly said, Casimir walked out of the office. He didn't need to stay in Versacorp anymore. The entire company was under his control. Now he could openly tell everyone that he wanted Versacorp to go bankrupt in his hands. He no longer feared the authority of his grandfather. Everything would change in the future. Feeling like a new man born from his ashes, Casimir tidied up his suit. Every breath he took was fresh. The corner of his mouth was raised high. Casimir liked this feeling. It was new to him, and he enjoyed every bit of it. If Emily wasn't in hiding, Casimir would have shared this piece of news with her immediately. Unfortunately, he could not go to see her again, as it would certainly raise some suspicions. Now that they had reached this stage, Casimir had to be more careful. He didn't want Emily to be implicated in what was going on at Versacorp. 
he did not even share the good news with her on WhatsApp. Casimir looked at the VersaCorp building behind him. He didn't know where to go for a while. He just stood and stared blankly at the building. He was clueless as to where to go. He didn't even want to go back to his villa. Now, he had nothing left. His hands were empty. He didn't know how to describe this feeling. It was not as simple as just getting a new life. He thought he might even feel regretful later on. The cold wind blew on Casimir's face. He wrapped his clothes tightly and suddenly felt that he liked the cold. Emily, who was hiding in the villa, immediately learned about Casimir's situation from Max. Max must have planted spies at VersaCorp. Casimir was chased out of his office? Emily found it interesting. You don't seem worried at all. Max saw through Emily at first glance and felt that she was more interested in watching the show. What's there to worry about? Emily said with a smile. There is nothing that Casimir can't handle at VersaCorp. Emily was not worried about Casimir at all. She knew he was a smart and capable man. Max shrugged. He had to admit that Emily's words were true, but she was still too indifferent. Joseph Graves is not someone to be trifled with, Max reminded Emily. He tried to see a trace of worry on Emily's face. I figured that he must be the one who wants to get rid of Casimir, Emily said. Since you have guessed it, why aren't you worried about Casimir? Max wanted to see Emily's worry. He wanted to see Emily's worried look for her lover. Emily, however, pulled the corner of her mouth. Max was simply too gossipy. She would not satisfy Max's bad taste. Max, you talk too much. VersaCorp is now completely in Casimir's hands. I don't know why I should be worried. Emily shrugged. Even Joseph Graves can't get rid of Casimir so easily. Max saw that he could not scare Emily, so he gave up trying to make her worried. I guess your analysis is correct. Max left the sofa. He was disappointed with himself. He wanted to get an emotional reaction out of her, but he failed. Emily, the courtyard outside isn't bad. Shall we go and play badminton? Max suggested. He had to find something to do. Emily rolled her eyes at Max. Right now, she only wanted to sleep lazily on the bed. She didn't want to do anything, nor did she want to move her body. Max was mercilessly rejected by Emily. His eyes shifted to Nikolai in the corner. Nikolai, however, looked the other way. Nikolai, let's go play badminton, Max said. I've never played badminton. Nikolai wasn't interested in playing. Max did not understand. What's the matter with you two? You're so lazy, he said. He just wanted to play badminton. Why was it so difficult? The two people who were just scolded were too lazy to even raise their heads. Max, however, refused to give up so easily. Nikolai, help me get the shuttlecock. Max revealed a bright smile to Nikolai. Get what? Nikolai asked. The shuttlecock. It's the thing you hit with your racket in the badminton. Max explained. I can't move. Nikolai continued to lie on the couch. He could not bear to get up from the couch. Max had to admit that after so many years, people could change. After all, Nikolai had become lazy. Then what do you want? Max walked up to Nikolai. He had already given up on Emily. It was better to focus on dealing with Nikolai. Emily covered her ears. These two brothers were like two children who had not grown up. Did they really not realize that their ages added up to almost 80? Max, I just want to relax, Nikolai said seriously, as if all his strength had been stolen. All he wanted to do now was to enjoy the afternoon peace. Nikolai! Look at yourself now, Max said. Why don't you find a place to lie down and not walk around in front of me? Nikolai was getting more and more talkative. Hearing Nikolai's words, 
Max thought about finding something to smack this man with. Emily considered moving to another place. Max and Nikolai were making so much noise, and Emily was worried that they would disturb the neighbors. She hoped that the sound insulation of this villa was good. Just when Emily was about to leave the room, she was caught by Max. Max looked at Emily from afar with a smirk on his face. Emily, what are you doing? Emily was caught off guard by Max's sudden shift of attention to her. Max, you guys are very noisy. I want to go somewhere else. Emily honestly replied. She did not expect Max to put her on the spot. She was really unlucky. Max walked up to her with a smile. Emily was frozen in place. She did not know whether to continue forward or retreat to her own sofa. Emily, you are being unfair to me, Max said bitterly, as if she had done something terrible. Emily smiled awkwardly at Max. Can't you be quiet? Do you plan to stay here and do nothing? Max asked Emily. In the past, Emily was the one who could not stay idle. Since when did she become a couch potato? Emily shook her head. Our first priority now is to hide and keep a low profile. It's better not to go outside. She wished that Max would not bother her again. Does playing badminton have anything to do with not keeping a low profile? Max said, feeling wronged. He just wanted to play badminton. What was wrong with that? Of course! Someone might take our picture while we play. If you don't believe me, you can ask Nikolai. Emily dragged Nikolai into the battlefield along the way. No one would be able to watch the fire from the other side. When Nikolai heard Emily say this, he hurriedly replied, Right, right. Playing badminton is too risky. He only wanted to sleep on the sofa the whole day, and he didn't want anyone to wake him up. Emily crossed her arms around her chest. Right now, she had the advantage. She smiled brightly and continued to say to Max, Look, we both feel that playing badminton isn't the right choice. You should give up on this idea as soon as possible. After saying that, Emily openly walked to the second floor. Max still didn't want to give up. He said to Emily's back, If you don't want to play badminton in the yard, we can play badminton in the room. There's enough space here. Emily ran even faster when she heard him. Max looked at Emily's back in disappointment. Nikolai, play with me in the living room. Max shifted his attention back to him. Nikolai felt danger. He was sure that if he rejected Max this time, he wouldn't take it well. He could feel the sharpness in Max's eyes. He was considering whether he should just run or agree to playing a game. However, just as Nikolai was hesitating, Max had already walked up to him with big strides. Nikolai looked at Max in distress. Since Max wanted to play so much, he could not refuse. All right, Nikolai said reluctantly, but he didn't leave the couch. Max smiled coldly. Get up from the couch then. Nikolai was reluctant, but Max's eyes were getting more and more terrifying. Nikolai said unhappily, It's just a game. I'll play with you. Nikolai got off the couch, but he didn't seem happy about it. Emily saw this from the second floor and finally let out a sigh of relief. There was no way Max could drag her now into playing badminton. She wondered how Casimir was doing. Emily looked at her phone but did not see any message from Casimir. Will Emily call Casimir to ask him about the events at VersaCorp? That's it for today, guys. If you want to inspire me more, you can buy me a puppy. Thank you for listening.